Britannia Nutri Choice Digestive Biscuits are the only digestive biscuits made with 100% Pata and no maida, which means choosing any other digest. This is insane. Have you seen this ad? Check it out. Now, this is a video in which somebody has created a QR code and have added that in a newspaper advertisement. Wow. I think what, what a world to be in right now. What is happening over here is, is there are designers and marketers out there who are culminating the digital and the print media together to bring out an entirely new experience, right? We have been doing a lot of digital design and digital interaction content, but I realized that we do not have a lot on print while the print is not going anywhere we every day come across so much content out there that well sometimes digital is not the only way in fact digital has just started i think not more than 15 20 years since digital content has been produced everything prior to that was done on print media right there was there were advertisements there were posters there were banners there were flyers coming into your houses there were uh, books there are magazines newspapers i don't know for for all that matters there is so much content out there in print and it's not going to die soon so what i didn't realize is maybe i need to talk to you guys about how can we leverage both print and digital media together well so i realized why not create one video at least that talks about digital and print media together see if you're going to be creating print media you might have to end up designing it on a software itself there are a few things that i want you to understand when you are creating content for print media so let's get into it Well, the first thing what differs between both print media and digital media is audience interaction. How do people operate with both digital design and print media are slightly different. Digital design allows real-time interaction with users through elements like forms, surveys and real-time updates as well. Right? Think of Facebook for instance. There are so many different advertisements and every advertisement gives you a different experience. Some might just be for, for you to play a game. There could be other which redirects you to a different link altogether outside of Facebook and there are few which might just be a simple video. So there are different mediums in which the audience interaction happens in digital media. And now because of this, you can accommodate feedback such as you can, you can take in ratings, reviews and comments so that you can keep on increasing the quality of the designs that you have. While that is not something that you can do in print media because once a design has been made it is impossible to get it redone and be shared with those many people again the engagement is primarily through visual and content presentation so you might would just want good on both of those things now it also typically lacks interaction with the audience once it has been printed unless it was a feature like this the one that we just saw where a qr code can be added and that's what a lot of designers have started doing right now. They are trying to figure out how they can merge uh, different things together. You might have seen business cards with QR codes. You might have seen similar ads or even posters in uh, in the market that showcase a QR code that can be scanned as well. Well, that's not all. Some, some people and some marketing agencies, they have also started accommodating AR into designs. So in this video, this is exactly what this magazine company has done. It has integrated both the things together. Isn't that amazing? Moving on, I want to talk to you about the design considerations. So what do you think or what do you keep in mind when you're designing for, okay, let's start with digital design first, right? You're probably going to be focusing on interactive elements. You probably think of buttons, links, and animations that could play out. You'll probably think of file sizes. You'll probably think of uh, the user experience by, by changing intuitive or making intuitive navigation on user-friendly interfaces or good advertisements. You will probably think about user responsiveness or uh, changing these ads according to the various resolutions. If you're putting this on Instagram, it's a one, one, one cross one. If you're putting this on real, it's a nine is to 16 sort of ratio. In print, you'll have to keep something very similar in mind. You'll have to keep in mind the very specifications of uh, paper size and blade area. You probably have to think of color mode and CMYK uh, and in fact, even typography as well. But what is bleed? What about CMYK? What is that? I don't know what that means. Okay, let me answer those questions. Paper size and bleed, fine. In printing, bleed is the extra margin, uh, extra space that is around the edge of a document that will generally be cut off during production. So what happens is something like this. So to add 
a bleed in Illustrator is far more easier than doing the same thing in Photoshop. Over here, once you have created the document, if you've already created the document, you can go to document setup right from over here, or you can go that, or you can do the same thing from over here as well. So once you have document setup set, you can do the same thing from over here, document setup, or you can find this same option if it's not visible because of some other tool. You can always go to file and click document setup from here. Now you can see that this bleed is the option that you can choose. You can choose to set it up in millimeters. The general standard would be to about six millimeters on all sides. Once I have this clicked, I know that all of the sides are going to be consistently set up together. So once it's done, I hit OK. And now I have a small bleed over here for the entire document. That was easy. If you're creating a new document, you can set it up directly from over here in this panel itself. So you can set up of about 10 pixels or 6 millimeters, either one that works for you. So that way you can set it up over here. So it's the area where printed elements like photos, color blocks and text extend beyond the pages trimmed edge, right? Now the bleed allows the printer to print a piece slightly bigger than the usual size and then trim it down to the final size as we just saw in the video. That eliminates and makes the final printed piece a lot like final good and good design. And here is a short video of how you can set bleed in your Photoshop or illustrated design. CMYK. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Black is for key, right? Now this is the color mode that's used by commercial printing equipment that creates uh, full color graphics and images. Now the idea over here is that the same colors that we generally use are uh, RGB which is red, green and blue but in printing it becomes CMYK because those colors are easier to produce right in the factories and uh, those colors can be mixed together to create something like this. So if you've already created the project, you can change it by going to image mode and then choosing the CMYK color. That would merge and you can choose to don't merge so one of these options, don't rasterize. All of this is changing and finally the colors have changed. Now you can see that. And here is a short video to understand how you can add or change your color mode if you're, print, if you're creating designs for print in Photoshop and Illustrator. Well, the next and the last thing over here before somebody else stops me is about typography. Essentially, serif fonts allow for more comfortable reading at length as the serifs, which are the edge of these characters, they guide the eye smoothly from character to character and that makes serif fonts unideal for printed works, right? Now, because of this, serifs are still generally the go-to typeface for printed works such as books or reports, even though all of this is not an absolute rule. You can go around, change the design if you want, but generally this is the, more, the bigger preference. In fact, fonts like Times New Roman is still generally used by a lot of newspapers in here in India. Well, I think this, this was just some considerations. You can go about and get as creative as possible, but these are just some technical aspects that I want you to understand when you're designing for print media. I hope all of this was useful to you. And before anybody comes again over here, like this video, share it with somebody who you think needs it and subscribe to the design now. I will see you in another video.